In this video, we're going to discuss the movement of sugars through the phloem uh, in the plant. And this is section 9.2. And in the last video, we talked about uh, 9.1, we talked about the movement of water through the xylem. And these two are very closely connected. And they're somewhat similar, have some similar characteristics, and are connected to one another. The phloem is a portion of the plant that is responsible for moving organic nutrients and materials to different parts uh, of the cell and of the plant. And it's primarily, oftentimes, transporting sucrose. And so here is the uh, xylem, here's the phloem, and they're separated by something called the cambium, which is responsible for secondary growth in the roots and the stems. Uh, the phloem is comprised or made up of sieve tubes, and they are specialized cells um, they don't have any valves or a central pump like what we would see in animal blood vessels, but they're similar in that fluid is, is moving through them due to some pressure gradients. Um, it is a process that requires energy, so it's an active, passive, uh, active transport process, and we'll see, um, we'll see that here in a bit when we looked at, look at that process. And you may be thinking, well, where does the sugar come from? If you think back to photosynthesis, the sugar is coming from through the process of photosynthesis, which is occurring in those green mature leaves, um, in the stems, and, and those are uh, the sugars that are being produced are getting moved to something called a sink cell. Uh, you can think of it kind of as a storage location, and that's usually developing fruits or seeds or maybe some growing leaves or growing stems, roots, or even tubers, um, depending on what the plant needs exactly. And so how this process occurs is in the source cell that that sugar gets made. Glucose is made from photosynthesis and it gets transported to sucrose um, to make it a little bit easier to transport. It's a little bit more stable and so the glucose generally in most plants is being converted into sucrose. A specific cell called a companion cell then takes that sucrose and loads it or puts it into the phloem sieve tube. Water through osmosis then moves from the xylem to the phloem. And the reason for this is if you think about movement from high to low concentration, we've talked about this previously uh, in diffusion videos, there's now a high concentration of this sugar in this phloem tube. And so water is going to move through osmosis from areas of high concentration to low concentration. Obviously in the xylem there's going to be a high concentration of excuse me, of water, and in the phloem there's going to be a low concentration because all of that sugar has been added. So water diffuses into the phloem, and it does so in order to uh, help that sugar move through the phloem. Um, and so it moves through or transfers in by osmosis, and as that happens, this sap substance, the sugar and the water, increases in volume, which causes an increase in pressure. That increase in pressure drives the sap down the sieve tube to something called the sink cell. And that would be right here in our diagram. And at the sink cell, that's where that sugar is going to be stored um, or unpacked into the sink cells. And the unloading of these organic molecules again happens by a companion cell, unloading of the sugar. Um, and the sucrose is stored as an insoluble or in, uh, unreactive starch in the sink cells, usually in roots or fruits developing seeds. Water that was actually used in this, pro uh, this transport process moves back to the xylem because once all of the sugar has been removed into the sink cell, now there's a high concentration of water here. And so again, through osmosis, water moves from higher area to low area in the xylem, and that process repeats itself. So the water is essentially reused or eventually move up out to leaves through transpiration. Um, and so that's kind of how this process, process occurs. Here's a step-by-step -step look at, at how this, what's happening here. Um, it's the moving of organic molecules from the source through the uh, phloem to the sink or storage cells, and this is by active transport. Companion cells load the sucrose into the phloem. Water follows the high solute into the phloem by osmosis. This creates a positive pressure potential develops. It moves the mass of the phloem sap downward. Uh, towards that, that sink cell, and it's called mass flow. The phloem sap, the water and the sugar, crosses the sieve plate. The phloem sap moves into the sink cell, and this is made possible by a lack of organelles in the phloem. The companion cells unload their organic molecules into the sink, and this is active transport. This uses ATP. The organic molecules are stored as starch in the, in the sink cells. 
And then lastly, the water is released and recycled back into the xylem. Let's look more closely now at the process of loading uh, the, the sugars into the phloem. Active transport is used to make this, this process possible um, to load the, the sugar into the phloem, uh, phloem tubes. And there's really two different ways that this can occur, and it depends on the, um, the type of plant. Um, the first is called an apoplast pathway. Let me skip forward a bit here. And this is when sugars travel through the cell wall from mesophyll cells um, to the cell walls of the companion cell where the sucose transport protein actively transports the sugar inside. Uh, this establishes a concentration gradient using ATP, uh, which moves hydrogen ions outside of the cell to create a high concentration. A co-transporter moves hydrogen and sugar into the cell. And we'll go back and take a look at this in a second. The symplast pathway is moving the, the, the sugar through the cytoplasm, so they differ a little bit in between. Let's go back and take a look at this image here. What this is showing us is the movement and how this process actually occurs, the use of ATP uh, in order to make this process occur through active transport. And so, so ATP is used to pump hydrogen ions from inside to outside the cell. And this is in order to create a high concentration of hydrogen ions here. When those hydrogen ions then want to move from an area of high concentration to low concentration inside the cell, they do so through a co-transporter protein. And so the hydrogen ions move through this protein. And as they do so, it pulls sucrose along with it. And so it's able to move the sucrose from this low sucrose concentration to a high sucrose concentration by using this particular protein called a co-transporter. And, and that's all made possible by the pumping of hydrogen ions outside of the cell and the movement back inside of the cell. So the cell is spending energy in order to be able to make this occur, in order to be able to move, um, move the sucrose inside of the cell. Looking at the hydrostatic static pressure gradients through this process is really kind of what we've already discussed and um, we can outline it a little bit further. Basically a buildup of sucrose in the companion cell draws water from the xylem because we have a, a low concentration of uh, water in the phloem initially. And so water moves um, by osmosis and that creates a buildup of pressure in the companion cell. Um, and so at as the the sap, the water, and the, and the sugar moves down the phloem to the sink cell. At the sink cell, the sucrose is drawn out by those companion cells. And so the loss of solute causes a, a reduction in the pressure in this location here, causing water to be then drawn back into the xylem. And so we talked about movement from high area to low concentration areas. Well, the same, same idea here. It's from a, the water is flowing from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. Uh, in this condition here. The seed tubes are very unique and have uh, a lot of specialized specific functions through this process of loading and moving and transporting uh, of carbo carbohydrates. Um, unlike the xylem cells, they are living um, and, and they are required to move these carbohydrates over long distances or, or sometimes uh, a, a far distance in the, in the plants, and they're very closely associated with the companion cells. Um, they use a lot of ATP, so obviously they're going to have multiple or lots of mitochondria um, because they need an abundance of energy to be able to perform the active tra transport required to load and unload the, uh, the sugars. Um, they also need enzymes uh, activity in the companion cells to be able to help with the movement. Uh, and some unique features and structures of these is they have perforated walls, they have these plates with small holes in them, the seed plates, um, and these tubes help to slow the, the movement or the flow of the phloem sap. Um, they're very uh, closely associated with the companion cells because the companion cells are, are loading and unloading um, the sugar into, into them, either from the source or from the sink, um, and they Although they don't have a nucleus um, and a lot of organelles, they do have mitochondria and are living in order to be able to make this, uh, allow these processes to occur, uh, as well as have enzyme activities to help 
uh, be able to move the sugar. Lastly, they also have really rigid and strong cell, uh, cell walls in order to be able to withstand the pressure buildup that's occurring in the phloem tubes as that sap is moving through them. This completes our discussion of transport in the phloem, primarily of sucrose and of sugars, organic molecules. Um, in the next couple of videos, we'll continue our discussion of plants.